Hi, I'm Dr. Simon Freilich, consultant in clinical neurophysiology. In this video, I'm going to explain side by side what we see on EMG in a neuropathic state and in myopathic states. Let's first start off with the myopathic situation. So here we have in our diagram um, a schematic of a needle as it's sitting inside some muscle and around it is a radius where you can actually uh, pick up the signals from the motor fibers so within that cone as it were or, or, or sphere really um, of detection one will be able to see individual um, activities from the muscle fibers in a myopathic process the muscle fibers start shrinking down and so that reflects itself on the oscilloscope by the amount of current that these muscle fibers can generate being smaller in amplitude than in the healthy state. They're also polyphasic and the reason is if you have a look to the uh, diagram on the right hand side here is you now have more of these shrunken muscle fibers crowded around the needle and so you're getting an overlap of more action potentials relating to the contraction of these muscles. So you get small amplitude because they've all shrunk and they become polyphasic because there are more of them crowded around the needle. And so more of them are being seen and, and by the needle and the oscilloscope and so that's what one's getting. They're also rapidly recruiting. So one loses this orderly recruitment of smaller ones and then, far, and then larger ones coming in because what's happening here is, is the brain is trying to drive the muscles into generating force. And the normal process is completely um, interfered with because um, one's now having all these small muscle fibers, shrunken muscle fibers, and the brain's doing its very best to try and sort of flog um, these knackered out old horses, as it were, um, into generating more force. And so, a lot of these muscle fibers will be recruited very, very quickly, very rapidly to try and generate the force. The interference pattern therefore becomes very full very, very quickly, even with submaximal effort as one loses this orderly recruitment. So in summary, you have small amplitude, polyphasic, rapidly recruiting um, motor fibers uh, with a full interference pattern with submaximal effort. This is a screenshot of a myopathic um, EMG. The amplitude of these, I'm sorry you can't see the actual um, scale of this on here, but these are 0.2 to 0.3 millivolts in amplitude. The normal size uh, is roughly between one and two millivolts. So um, you know, it's quite significantly reduced in amplitude. You can see these are very spiky, polyphasic, and there are lots of these here on the screen. I'm now going to play a video of what happens in a myopathy. So here we go. As you can see, one's having a very rapid recruitment of the interference pattern here um, with these very polyphasic and relatively low amplitude uh, motor units. Let's have a think now about what happens in the neurogenic situation and it's a bit more complicated here and so I'm going to really be talking about what's present in the chronic phase after terminal uh, axon sprouting. So what happens over here is is that as parts of the nerve fascicles die off one actually has some withering away of muscle fibers the remaining muscle fibers can then become um, re-innovated by some of the surviving nerve fibers around. And so what happens over here is, is that there are more muscle fibers under the control of the same motor unit after axonal sprouting has occurred. And so because you are having more muscle fibers contributing to the motor unit potentials, you actually have a larger amplitude uh, motor unit. They also become wide and polyphasic because these are spread further away as they've all been sucked into the same motor unit. 
the recruitment also becomes abnormal and one's actually having these larger amplitude units uh, coming in pretty quickly as opposed to the normal orderly way that they are normally activated and the interference pattern is also going to be reduced because actually you've lost muscle fibers too. So here we go this is a screenshot of what a neurogenic uh, unit looks like over here and these are large amplitude and as you can see these are quite uh, wide in terms of the duration and also polyphasic too and I'm now going to play you a clip of what this actually sounds like in real life And it sounds rather like popcorn and a, a popcorn machine popping away. These are relatively duller sounds um, as opposed to the situation with myopathy, which are quite scratchy sounds. So these are rather, rather dull sounds. And one is having fewer motor unit action potentials being displayed on the screen here as there are fewer motor units still present uh, down at the level of the muscle fibers. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please do support the channel by liking, sharing and subscribing and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.